In this video, I'll delve deep into the lore and backstory of the legendary figure of Sun Wukong, exploring the myths, legends, and the, the rich cultural heritage that has made Black Myth Wukong a gaming phenomenon. Join me as I unravel the threads of this ancient tale, and let's discover together the secrets and events that shaped him from his humble beginnings to his rise to power. I will start with the literary background, then I'll take a closer look at the game's world, and finally I will delve into the intriguing lore surrounding the unforgettable main characters of Black Myth Wukong. This journey is going to be both lengthy and thrilling, and I truly hope you'll stay with me all the way to the finish line. But to make your experience smoother, I've included several timestamps, so you can easily bypass any parts that don't capture your attention. Also, keep in mind that given the nature of this video, it's likely that you'll come across a few spoilers along the way. So without further ado, let's get started. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content on Black Myth Wukong and other exciting games. Just as I said I would, let's kick things off by exploring the literary foundations of the game. As you might already know, Black Myth Wukong is inspired by the renowned novel Journey to the West, built on a mix of myth, folklore, and religious elements, penned by Wu Chang'in during the Ming Dynasty in the 16th century. What you may not realize is that the seed of Sun Wukong's story lies in a real-life pilgrimage. In 629, Xuanzang, a devoted Buddhist monk from China, set off on a remarkable 16-year journey spanning 10,000 miles to find sacred scriptures in India. His detailed narrative, known as Records of the Western Regions, became deeply embedded in the Chinese culture and inspired the classic novel Journey to the West, where Wu Chang'in will reimagine Xuanzang's adventures, turning the historical monk into the fictional character Tang Sanzang. The other thing what you may not know is that Sun Wukong, the Monkey King, is a cornerstone of Chinese literary heritage, with his story and all the characters involved echoing across various media, from anime and manga to television and opera, music and poetry, and beyond into the realm of video games. In China, he stands as a cultural icon, celebrated as a superhero by almost everyone, inspiring every young boy to dream of becoming just like him. Furthermore, the myths tied to Buddhism have contributed to the popularity and the widespread recognition of these deities and legendary figures across the entire Asian cultural landscape. To give you a sense of his importance, Wukong could be seen as the Odysseus of Eastern storytelling, and perhaps even more impactful than Ulysses, as his story has thrived in popularity for over four centuries. A striking illustration of the immense popularity of our handsome Monkey King is the astonishing lineup of well-known movie stars and celebrities engaged in the Black Myth Wukong project. Mark Takeshi Ota is the voice of Sun Wukong, non-white, and the green-capped martialist. Free from you and your so-called merits. Andrew Koji is the voice of Erlang Shen. He's not just any monkey. He's a monkey of merit. A monkey was made Buddha once. Leader Louis is the voice of Ping Ping, and Bottom takes top. Thank you for saving me. I am the Ball King's daughter, Ping Ping. Jack Ayres is the voice of Zhu Baji. Uh, what took you so long? Constipation? I was nearly cooked alive in there. And Millie Hikasa is the voice of Kang Jin Star, the fourth sister, Guan Yin, and the Snow Fox. How ungrateful. Evidently, you just don't deserve the ecstasy of the new West. And believe it or not, the face models and motion capture performers are actually entirely different, well-known actors. Yin Kai is our charming son Wukong. How I'll slaughter each mongrel of the court. Wung Guo Haoji is Erlang Shen. Zhang Yishang is Kang Ying Star. And Yan Shu Wu is the Violet Spider. And now, having grasped just how beloved the Wukong story is, let's jump right into the tale itself. If you're like me a few months ago and haven't heard of this story, let's take a moment to explore a not-so-quick overview of the journey to the West and introduce the iconic, fascinating character of Sun Wukong. The tale unfolds with a mystical stone, 
infused with the energies of both Earth and Haven, a true embodiment of the yin and yang balance. After a millennium, the stone split open, giving life to a fully developed monkey. This monkey set out to join a troop of his kind and quickly climbed the hierarchy to become their king after showcasing his courage by discovering their home. This is how Wukong became the monkey king of Mount Huaguo, also called the Flower Fruit Mountain. But as is often the case with those who have achieved greatness and dread the thought of loss, Wukong became haunted by the fear of mortality, and his fear drove him to embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of eternal life. His journey takes him to an ageless, immortal sage named Puti Zushi, who grants him the name Sun Wukong, which translates to Monkey Awakened from Emptiness. Through rigorous training on Puti Zushi's side, he unlocks a range of magical powers, allowing him to master the cloud somersault, the immortal breath, the diamond body, and the fiery eyes, to morph into 72 different creatures, or create duplicates of himself using his hair. We can witness these incredible abilities in action, as they are, are vividly showcased throughout the entire game. However, with each surge of power, his arrogance swells, and eventually, he turns away from the wisdom of his mentor. Instead, he persuades the Dragon King of the Eastern Sea into obtaining a fantastically enchanted staff that can change its dimensions, replicate itself, and engage in combat at his command. Despite mastering powerful sorceries and wielding a celestial weapon, Wukong remains deeply unfulfilled. Although he is likely one of the mightiest entities in the universe, he feels like an outcast in the celestial realm, yearning for a place in heaven. In their measured wisdom, the divine powers seek to soothe Wukong by assigning him the menial role of a stable boy, a move that deeply offends him, and Wukong continuously voices his grievances until he is granted a more prestigious role as the protector of the Immortality Peach Garden. Yet, heaven misjudged the Monkey King, who, in his insatiable greed, feasted on their sacred ambrosia, ultimately achieving the immortality he craved and acquiring an astonishing amount of power in the process. Infatuated with his own power, he proclaims himself the title of the Great Sage Heaven's Equal, and rebelling against the heavenly order, he embarks on a fierce battle against the heavens, obliterating 100,000 celestial fighters, conquering all 28 mythical constellations, defeating the four heavenly kings, and even bringing down a few gods in his path. We can experience these epic confrontations throughout the game, and the stunning details vividly revealing the truly astonishing magnitude of these actions. Then, in a surprising turn of events, the unimaginable occurred. The Buddha, the embodiment of peace and wisdom, finally snapped and unleashed a mountain upon him, locking him away for 500 long years, sealed under the Five Elements Mountain. This allows Sun Wukong ample opportunity to contemplate his choices and absorb a much-needed lesson in humility. He comes to understand that authentic power could reside in wisdom instead of just physical strength. Then, 500 years later, he is saved by the Buddhist monk Tang San Zhang, and he agrees to serve as a bodyguard for the monk, alongside three other wrongdoers. Among his companions are Zhu Bajie, a heavenly marshal who fell from grace and became a pig demon after being banished to Earth, the white dragon horse, a punished dragon prince turned into a horse, and Xiao Wujing, a former celestial general who found himself exiled to the human realm. Their mission is to recover sacred scriptures and pursue the path of enlightenment in the epic journey to the West. Throughout their journey, they faced 81 formidable challenges before finally reaching the Buddha. Each of these trials served as a test of their determination, faith, and character, crafted to cleanse their spirits and guide them towards spiritual enlightenment. At this point, the narrative shifts to an episodic style, chronicling the adventures of Sun Wukong and his companions as they defend Tang against a host of demons and monstrous creatures referred to as Yao Guais. And of course, the story continues to unfold almost endlessly, but I'll take a break here. With the background established, let's dive deeper into the Journey to the West universe, exploring the various geographical regions where the tale takes place. In other words, the game's world. The Journey to the West universe presents a world divided into four key realms. The Heavenly Realm, the Buddhist Realm, 
the human realm and the underworld. The heavenly realm is the domain of the immortal Xi'an and is ruled by the Jade Emperor. The Buddhist realm is led by the Buddha Tathagata, with Mount Lingshan as its focal point, as the pivotal destination where the Journey to the West team aims to go in their pursuit of the sacred texts. The human realm, the world we know, is filled with both humans and Yaoguai demons. These Yaoguai are animals that have developed into semi-human forms. While they are often seen as foes, there are also good Yaoguai, mirroring the spectrum of morality found in humans. In this world, both humans and Yaoguai have the opportunity to achieve immortality or to overcome challenges and become Buddhas. Yet, if they fail to accomplish this within their lifetime, they will face reincarnation in the underworld. In the realm of the underworld, the spirits dwell under the authority of King Yama, who oversees the cycle of life and death for both humans and Yaoguai. Usually, both entities are bound by their fated paths, which dictate how long they will live, and King Yama meticulously follows these destinies to regulate the life and death journey of each soul. There are six main regions in the game, one for each chapter, Black Wind Mountain in Chapter 1, Yellow Wind Ridge in Chapter 2, the New West in Chapter 3, the Webbed Hollow in Chapter 4, the Flaming Mountains in Chapter 5, and Mount Huaguo in the final chapter. Black Wind Mountain stands as a beautiful peak, lauded for its incredible scenery by both Wukong and Guanyin. In this chapter, the narrative takes us to the Forest of Wolves, the Bamboo Grove, the Black Wind Cave, and of course, to the Guanyin Temple. The Guanyin Temple, Situated to the north of this majestic mountain, it's a lively Buddhist sanctuary, frequented by many worshippers. And as you might remember, the esteemed abbot here is none other than Elder Jinchi. Nestled to the south of Guanyin Temple, the Black Wind Cave is the lair of the Black Wind King. According to the original narrative, the entrance boasts an elaborate design filled with intricate mechanisms that even Wukong could not unravel. Once the Black Wind King slipped inside, Wukong was left with no means to act. Yellow Wind Ridge stands as a treacherous site where Tang Sanzang and his companions face formidable challenges in the 20th chapter of Journey to the West. In the game is the second chapter and takes us to several amazing locations like Sandgate Village, Fright Cliff, Kingdom of Sahali, the Crouching Tiger Temple, and the focal point of this chapter, the Yellow Wind Cave, home to the menacing Yellow Wind Guai. The original text vividly illustrates Yellow Wind Ridge, with its towering cliffs and the strange howling winds that often sweep through the rugged mountains. Chapter 3 takes us to the New West, where we are going to conquer the Snow Hill Path, the Pagoda Realm, the Bitter Lake, the Valley of Ecstasy, Mount May, and the new Thunderclap Temple built by Yellow Brow. In the classic narrative, Yellow Brow pilfered a holy artifact from Maitreya Buddha, rallied a group of mischievous Yaoguai and misled the followers, all in pursuit of his own dream of becoming a Buddha. When Tang Sanzang and his companions came along, Yellowbrow's malevolent intentions surfaced, and he schemed to kill Tang Sanzang and his companions, hoping to take their place on the path to acquiring the scriptures and thus attain true Buddhahood. But following a lengthy and intense confrontation, Maitreya finally managed to subdue him. A fascinating point to highlight here, is that the New West truly exists in the physical world. The new Thunderclap Temple featured in the game draws inspiration from the actual New West situated on Phoenix Mountain, to the west of Zixian County and Linfen City, Shanxi Province, and the immense success of Black Myth Wukong has led to a dramatic rise in visitors eager to experience its beauty. Next, we find ourselves in the Webbed Hollow, where Chapter 4 unfolds. We must navigate through the village of Langxi and the mysterious webbed hollow cave to discover the Temple of Yellow Flowers and the hidden area of Purple Cloud Mountain. The original tale features seven female Yao Guai living in a cave called Webbed Hollow, and Zhu Baji morphs into a catfish at the cleansing spring to charm them. However, the Taoist master at the Temple of Yellow Flowers is revealed to be the elder brother of these Yao Guai. So when Tang Sanzang and his followers visit the temple, they find themselves poisoned by him. And as the plot thickens, they uncover that the Taoist priest is in fact a centipede Yao Guai, and his seven junior sisters are all spider Yao Guai. The penultimate chapter leads us to another significant location of the original novel, the place where Red Boy grew up, the Flaming Mountains. 
The mountain is consumed by raging flames that ordinary methods cannot douse. Only the enchanted banana leaf fan holds the power to tame the inferno. We must defeat 19 bosses here to survive the woods of ember, the furnace valley, and the field of fire, and to discover the secrets that lie within the Bishui cave. And once again, the flaming mountains are not just a myth, they are a real geographical wonder. Situated in the Gaochang district of Turpan, within the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. The site is famously known as the hottest place in China, where temperatures on the sunlit slopes can hit a staggering 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I find it fascinating that the game unfolds after the original story's events, yet it's only in the final chapter that takes us back to Mount Huaguo, where the legendary Monkey King, Sun Wukong, first emerges and embarks on his incredible adventure. The mountain is envisioned as a blissful paradise found in the eastern continent of the Divine Turtle's Back, referred to as Ao Lai Country. This is where we will encounter those unforgettable foothills bosses, like the Cloud Treading Deer and the Supreme Celestial Inspector, where we can discover the well-hidden Water Curtain Cave and explore the aptly named Birthstone Area to confront the Stone Monkey and the Great Sage's Broken Shell. And yes, Huaguo Mountain, known as Mount Huaguoshan, is a genuine location found in the Haizhou district of Lianyungang, China. And needless to say, the mountain is adorned with numerous statues and sculptures that pay tribute to our beloved legendary heroes. At the entrance, visitors are welcomed by the striking representations of the four main characters, along with a cheerful gathering of 109 stone monkeys. Finally, let's see the fascinating and intriguing lore surrounding the unforgettable main characters of Black Myth Wukong. The birth of our handsome monkey caused a great disturbance in the heavenly realm, and the gods often referred to him as the monkey that sprang from a stone. At this point, he hadn't yet been given a name, so let's call him the Stone Monkey for the time being. He lived with a band of monkeys on Mount Huaguo, and one day, a monkey made an exciting discovery a hidden cave tucked away behind a waterfall, which served as a fantastic shelter. The monkeys decided to organize a contest. The first one to enter the cave would become their king. All the monkeys tried and failed, except for the stone monkey, and someone suggested, our king is so handsome, let's call him the handsome monkey king. And so, the stone monkey received his first title, the handsome monkey king, and the cave behind the waterfall was named the Water Curtain Cave. From that day forward, the stone monkey proudly introduced himself as the handsome monkey king of the water curtain cave on Mount Huaco. The attractive monkey king and his crew thrived in a carefree lifestyle on Mount Huaguo. However, the sudden demise of an elderly monkey led the handsome monkey king to reflect deeply on the concepts of life and death. Fearing his own mortality, he embarked on a quest across the world in search of eternal life. After facing numerous challenges, he became a disciple of the immortal Patriarch Bodhi, who granted him the name Sun Wukong and taught him various incredible abilities, notably the 72 transformations and the somersault cloud. In the end, he achieved immortality, but his mischievous spirit led to his banishment by the Patriarch. Being exiled, Sun Wukong returned to Mount Huaguo to discover that the Demon King of Chaos had taken over. It goes without saying that he triumphed over the Demon King, and as his reputation grew, he cultivated friendships with many influential Yao Guai kings. Noticing that the other Yao Guai kings wielded impressive weapons, Wukong felt compelled to obtain one as well, and a suggestion was made for him to seek out the Dragon King of the East Sea. The Dragon King, eager to forge a bond with the charming handsome Monkey King, was more than willing to provide him with a weapon but none of the weapons met Sun Wukong's expectations. In a bid to rid himself of Sun Wukong, the Dragon King presented a colossal pillar known as the Ruyi Jinggu Bang, wagering that if Wukong could lift it, the staff would be his to keep. To everyone's amazement, the staff recognized Wukong as its rightful master and responded to Wukong's commands, altering its size as he wished. When the Dragon King attempted to retract his promise, Sun Wukong, feeling deceived, unleashed chaos within the Dragon Palace and took the staff with him. Wukong's easygoing days on Mount Huaguo took a turn when a wild night of drinking ended with him being seized by underworld messengers. Upon regaining consciousness, he found himself in the underworld, face to face with King Yama, 
vehemently insisting that an immortal like himself should not be listed in the Book of Life and Death. In a fit of anger, Sun Wukong smashed the book to pieces, unleashing pandemonium in the realm of the dead. However, Sun Wukong's outrageous conduct was reported to the Jade Emperor in Heaven by both the Dragon King and King Yama. In an effort to maintain harmony, the Jade Emperor appointed Sun Wukong to a role within the Celestial Administration, believing that following divine regulations would temper his mischievous behavior. He was assigned the humble title of Keeper of the Heavenly Horses, tasked with managing the stables. Realizing he had been duped, Wukong erupted in rage, destroying the stables before retreating to Mount Huaguo, where he boldly declared himself the Great Sage equal to heaven. The Jade Emperor, feeling both humiliated and enraged, dispatched celestial soldiers to apprehend Wukong, but they were no match for his prowess. Then, in another strategic move, the Jade Emperor feigned acceptance of Sun Wukong's title and assigned him the responsibility of overseeing the Peach Garden, aiming to restrict his freedom within the heavenly realm. Sun Wukong found out that the peaches in the Divine Garden were exceptionally rare, taking 9,000 years to bloom and another 9,000 to yield fruit. Once he was in charge, he devoured many of these coveted peaches. One fateful day, during the Queen Mother's birthday feast, the seven fairies arrived to gather peaches for the celebration. Discovering he had not been invited, Sun Wukong flew into a rage, crashed the banquet at the Jade Pool, and took all the delicious food and wine to share with his monkey companions. In his chaotic adventure, he also inadvertently stumbled into Laozi's palace and devoured all the elixirs he found there. When his mischief came to light, the Jade Emperor instructed Heavenly King Li and Erlang Shen to seize Sun Wukong, sending forth an impressive force of 100,000 heavenly soldiers. Even though he fought with great ferocity, Sun Wukong was ultimately taken prisoner. The gods attempted numerous forms of punishment, but none succeeded in causing him any harm, and in the end, the Jade Emperor commanded Laozi to throw Sun Wukong into the Eight Trigrams Furnace for incineration. However, rather than perishing, Sun Wukong emerged with his fiery golden eyes. He then stormed into the Hall of Miraculous Mist, striking fear into the hearts of the gods. Ultimately, Sun Wukong emerged victorious and made his way back to Mount Huaguo. Unable to control him, the Jade Emperor sought the aid of the Buddha, who ultimately subdued Sun Wukong and imprisoned him beneath the Five Elements Mountain. Five centuries later, Guan Yin, the Bodhisattva of Compassion sought to save Sun Wukong. She made her way to the Five Elements Mountain and urged him to wait for a monk who would set off on a mission to collect sacred texts from the Western Paradise. Years later, he indeed met Tang Sanzang, who liberated him from his bonds, marking the start of their epic journey westward. Zhu Bajie, famously referred to as Pigzi, was once known as Marshal Tianpeng in the Celestial Realm. His fate took a turn for the worse when his drunken antics led him to flirt with Chang'e, the beautiful moon goddess residing in Guanghan Palace. As a result of his mischief, the Jade Emperor decided to banish him down to the Earthly Realm. Exiled to the human world, Baji aimed to take over a human body for his rebirth, but a fateful error landed him in the womb of a pig. Enraged by his predicament, he slaughtered his mother and siblings right after his birth, and from that moment on, he transformed into a pig Yaoguai, dwelling in the mountains and preying on humans. Eventually, Lady Egg, the mistress of Yunzhen Cave on Fueling Mountain, recognized his exceptional martial abilities and chose him as her husband. Unfortunately, she passed away within a year, leaving the pig Yaoguai to take over the cave and persist in his life of banditry. Even with the memories of his past life haunting him, he felt a deep sense of guilt and a strong desire for redemption. One day, the pig Yao Guai spotted a white silhouette soaring through the sky. As he looked more closely, he recognized it was Guan Yin. He stepped in her way and shared his tale, pleading for her assistance to avoid his impending doom. Guan Yin offered him a chance for redemption telling him to wait in the mountains for the pilgrim destined to travel westward in search of sacred scriptures. During his wait for the pilgrim, he morphed into a human, calling himself Zhu Gangle, and became the son-in-law of Gao village, after the village chief took him in as the spouse of his third daughter. However, over time, he abandoned the magic that concealed his real appearance, leading to his ears becoming oversized. 
his nose stretching out and bristles sprouting on his neck, ultimately transforming him into a pig. The Gao family, filled with fear, sought assistance to drive away the Yao Guai, and enraged by their actions, Zhu Gangli imprisoned the third daughter in the backyard, ensuring that no one could see her. As Tang Sanzang and Sun Wukong journeyed through Gao village, they discovered that a Yao Guai was causing chaos and decided to lend a hand. Sun Wukong cleverly rescued the daughter and took on her appearance, hiding in her room to await Zhu Gangli's return. When night fell, Zhu Gangli arrived. Sun Wukong pretended to be unable to walk, asking to be carried, and after a few humorous exchanges, he managed to overpower him. Upon recognizing him, Zhu Gangli revealed that he had been enlightened by Guan Yin and was eagerly awaiting the pilgrim's arrival. Known as the Black Bear Guai, the Black Wind King dwells in the Black Wind Cave on Black Wind Mountain, not far from Guan Yin Temple. He has a passion for meditation and the art of alchemy, and he enjoys a harmonious relationship with Elder Jinshi, the temple's abbot. Together, they often engage in thoughtful conversations and meditation. Additionally, the Black Wind King shares a close bond with two other friends, White-clad Noble and Ling Suzi, with whom he regularly shares insights on alchemical practices. One day, the Black Wind King noticed flames engulfing Guan Yin Temple. Eager to lend a hand, he swiftly rode a cloud to the scene, but as he arrived, his gaze fell upon a beautiful brocade kasaya, a highly prized Buddhist robe, and he chose to abandon his noble intentions to snatch the valuable garment instead. After acquiring the Kasaya, the Black Wind King called upon white-clad noble and Ling Suzi to help him assess the valuable treasure. They agreed to host a Buddhist robe gathering in celebration of the Black Wind King's birthday. At the same time, Sun Wukong was on a quest to find the stolen Kasaya and arrived at Black Wind Mountain. Realizing that the Black Wind King was behind the theft, he confronted him without hesitation. In the fierce confrontation that followed, the white-clad noble met his demise, while the Black Wind King and Ling Shuzi made their escape to the cleverly concealed Black Wind Cave. This cave was so intricately designed that Sun Wukong found it impossible to gain entry. Frustrated, he attempted to entice the Black Wind King to come out. Annoyed by the disturbance, the Black Wind King emerged and engaged in a fierce duel with Sun Wukong, but neither could claim victory. Eventually, the Black Wind King suggested a pause for lunch and retreated back into the cave to prepare for his birthday festivities, sending out invitations to the nearby Yaoguai kings for the Buddhist robe gathering. The Black Wind King, unaware that Elder Jinchi had passed away, sent an invitation to him as well. Sun Wukong intercepted the message and after perusing its details, chose to masquerade as Elder Jinchi to attend the gathering. The Black Wind King, surprised by the sudden appearance of Elder Jinchi, began to suspect that he might be there to reclaim the Kasaya and ordered his minions to hide it away. But a patrol Yao Guai discovered a dead Yao Guai slain by Sun Wukong and rushed to inform the Black Wind King that the figure before him was not Elder Jinchi, but Sun Wukong in disguise. A fierce confrontation erupted, moving from the cave to the outside world until night descended. Ultimately, the Black Wind King called for a truce and retreated back into the cave once again. Upon returning to Guan Yin Temple, Sun Wukong decided to seek Guan Yin's help, and he traveled to the South Sea to request her assistance. Together, they made their way back to Black Wind Mountain, where they stumbled upon Ling Suzi, who was carrying a tray with two elixirs intended for the Buddhist robe gathering. In a swift move, Sun Wukong struck him down, consumed one elixir, and transformed into the other one on the tray. Guan Yin then took on the guise of Ling Suzi. The fraudulent Ling Suzi offered the elixirs to the Black Wind King, who, completely unaware of the ruse, swallowed the potion that was actually Sun Wukong in disguise. Once inside the Black Wind King's belly, Sun Wukong unleashed excruciating pain, compelling the king to plead for mercy. Guan Yin then revealed her true self and adorned the Black Bear Demon with a golden hoop urging him to convert to Buddhism. The Black Bear Guai accepted her guidance, and Guan Yin performed a sacred ritual to ordain him, escorting him to Mount Luoja to fulfill his new duty as a guardian deity. Elder Jinchi, the abbot of Guan Yin Temple, is also a passionate collector of kasayas, 
During a stop at Guanyin Temple while passing Black Wind Mountain, Tang Sanzang and Wukong spent the night there. Seizing the moment, Elder Jinchi eagerly showcased his collection to the two travelers, but Wukong found Elder Jinchi's kasayas rather unimpressive and chose to highlight Tang Sanzang's kasaya, a rare gem gifted by Guanyin herself. Intrigued, Elder Jinchi asked to borrow this extraordinary kasaya for a night to admire it further, and as he marveled at the kasaya, his desire to own it grew stronger and stronger. Ultimately, succumbing to his greed, he called upon his disciples, Guangzhi and Guangmu, to help him hatch a plan to obtain it. Together, the three plotted to set ablaze the temple housing Tang Sanzang and his disciples, believing that the resulting chaos would allow them to snatch the Kasaya. Yet, their sinister scheme took a disastrous turn, because the fire they unleashed spiraled out of control, leaving them ensnared by the very inferno they had created. As the fire raged uncontrollably, Sun Wukong borrowed the fireproof mantle from the four heavenly kings in order to protect Tang Sanzang from the fire, while Elder Jinchi hurried to rescue his precious collection of kasayas, only to discover that Tang Sanzang's kasaya had vanished. In his desperate quest to find it, he ended up losing his other kasayas as well. And the flames ultimately consumed Guanyin Temple, claiming the lives of Guangmu and Guangzhi while they bravely tried to douse the inferno. Consumed by shame for his failure to secure the Kasaya and the loss of everything he cherished, Elder Jinchi succumbed to his shame and chose to end his life. With Jubaji under control, Tang Sanzang and Sun Wukong continued their westward adventure. They soon found themselves at Yellow Wind Ridge and immediately noticed that the wind had a peculiar character, unlike any they had encountered before. While they were deep in discussion about this curious phenomenon, a ferocious tiger sprang from the trees, causing Tang Sanzang to lose his balance and tumble from his horse. Witnessing the unfolding chaos, Wukong hurried to aid his master, while Baji seized his rake and swung it fiercely at the tiger. After a few rounds of combat, the tiger vanguard found itself outmatched and chose to retreat. But Jubaji was quick to follow, and they soon arrived at a rocky area where the Tiger Vanguard armed itself with two gleaming red bronze swords, and the clash reignited with even greater ferocity. Once his master was secure, Sun Wukong seized his golden cudgel and dashed off to help. Spotting Wukong coming his way, Tiger Vanguard took off once more, with Wukong and Baji hot on his heels. After sprinting a considerable distance down the mountain, Tiger Vanguard discarded its skin, leaving it on a large rock. It then morphed into a swift gust of wind and raced back up the mountain. The cunning plan was to use the discarded skin as a decoy to mislead Wukong and Baji while it made its way back to seize Tang Sanzang. As Wukong and Baji finally caught up, they stumbled upon what looked like the seemingly exhausted Tiger Vanguard lying on the ground. After realizing that they had fallen for a trick, they hurried back to find their master. But to their dismay, Tang Sanzang was nowhere to be found. So they decided to divide their efforts to search the mountain. Once back at Yellow Wind Cave with Tang Sanzang, the Tiger Vanguard made the chilling decision to present the monk as a feast for the Yellow Wind Sage. The Yellow Wind Sage was already aware of Tang Sanzang and Sun Wukong, and he felt a twinge of concern that Wukong might seek out trouble but Tiger Vanguard calmed his fears, insisting that they are not a cause for concern. Still, the Yellow Wind Sage couldn't shake his unease and chose to address the two disciples before savoring his meal. Thus, he ordered his minions to imprison Tang Sanzang. After a lengthy search, Sun Wukong and Zhu Bajie finally stumbled upon the mysterious Yellow Wind Cave. Wukong told Baji to stay behind and protect their belongings while he ventured forth to challenge the Yao Guais at the entrance. Upon hearing Wukong's battle cry, Tiger Vanguard sought the Yellow Wind Sage's approval to take on the challenge. And of course, despite his skills, he fell short against the might of Sun Wukong. Following a few brief confrontations, it lost the will to fight and chose to escape up the mountain. What it didn't realize was that Jubaji was lying in ambush in a nearby hollow. And caught unawares, Tiger Vanguard was swiftly taken down by Baji's rake. Yellow Wind Sage began his life as a weasel, finding enlightenment at the foot of Mount Lingshan. 
His fate changed when he was caught by Lingji Bodhisattva, who used the wind hammer to apprehend him after he pilfered pure oil from a glass lamp. However, the Buddha's forgiveness granted him the freedom to retreat into the wild once more. When Wukong returned to Yellow Wind Cave, dragging the fallen tiger vanguard behind him, Yellow Wind Sage erupted in anger, and seizing his weapon, he stormed out to face Wukong at the cave's entrance. Following over 30 fierce clashes, neither Wukong nor the Yellow Wind Sage could claim victory, and eager to save his master, Wukong took a handful of his own hairs and magically turned them into countless clones, encircling the Yellow Wind Sage. Startled by this sudden onslaught, the Yellow Wind Sage unleashed his most powerful technique. He summoned a fierce gust of yellow wind, scattering all of Wukong's clones. As Wukong faced the fray once more, the Yellow Wind Sage sent forth another powerful gust of yellow wind that struck him squarely in the eyes, leaving him sightless. Disoriented and vulnerable, Wukong stumbled around until Jubaji came to his aid. Wukong asked Baji to guide him to a nearby house nestled at the base of the mountain, intending to rest and allow his eyes to heal before making another attempt to rescue his master. By a stroke of luck, the residents of the house had a miraculous potion that healed Wukong's eyes, and that the next day, he visited several gods and Buddhas, learning that Yellow Wind Sage was intimidated by Lingji Bodhisattva's wind tamer. Without hesitation, Wukong approached Lingji Bodhisattva for assistance, and together they confronted Yellow Wind Sage, ultimately bringing him back to Mount Sumeru. In the realm of Chinese mythology, Kang Jin Lung is recognized as one of the 28 mansions, symbolizing the dragon. When Tang Sanzang and his companions reach New Thunderclap Temple, they face the Yao Guai known as Yellow Brow, and Wukong finds himself ensnared in a gold symbols created by Yellow Brow. This unique bowl neither allows his magical staff to grow large enough to break it, nor small enough to slip through. At the same time, Tang Sanzang, Zhu Baje, and Sha Wu Jing also fall into Yellow Brow's clutches. But just as despair sets in, the spies of the Jade Emperor quickly report the troubling news, prompting him to send the 28 mansions to aid in Wukong's rescue. But the 28 mansions are unable to unlock the gold symbols. Eventually, they come up with a clever idea to use Kang Jin Lung's horn to create a small opening between the two halves of the bowl. After a great deal of effort, Kang Jin Lung manages to fit his horn into the bowl. But Wukong still can't escape, so they decide to drill a tiny hole in Kang Jin Lung's horn, which allows Wukong to crawl through, and then Kang Jin Lung can pull him out. This clever tactic proves effective, and Wukong is freed from the gold symbols. Yellow Brow began his journey as a young attendant in the service of Maitreya Buddha. On one occasion, while Maitreya was away, he stole Maitreya's seed sack, the gong mallet, and the gold symbols, and made his way to New West, where he created the new Thunderclap Temple, masquerading as a false Buddha. When Tang Sanzang and his disciples reached New Thunderclap Temple, its remarkable similarity to the legendary Thunderclap Temple led Tang Sanzang to mistakenly think they had arrived at their goal. And filled with excitement, he took a bath and donned fresh robes in preparation to meet the Buddha. Wukong, with his keen, fiery golden eyes, recognized the deception but couldn't sway Tang Sanzang's conviction. The monk insisted that, whether or not it was the true Thunderclap Temple, they should still honor a temple they had encountered along their journey. Yellowbrow sat regally on a lotus throne, with his minions transformed into arhats positioned below him. When Sun Wukong defiantly refused to show respect, Yellow Brow unleashed a loud reprimand. And when Wukong lifted his golden hooped staff ready to strike, Yellow Brow captured him midair in the gold symbols. The other three fell victim to the minions, and as Yellow Brow unveiled his true identity, the disciples were left lamenting their disregard for Sun Wukong's warning words. After Wukong managed to break free from the gold symbols, thanks to Kang Jin Lung's assistance, Yellow Brow put forth a challenge. If Sun Wukong could triumph over him, he would allow Tang Sanzang and his followers to proceed on their journey west. If he failed, he would kill them and then pursue the scriptures on his own. With that, they began to fight. As the clash intensified, the 28 mansions joined the fight after 50 rounds surrounding Yellow Brow. But in a surprising move, he used the seed sack, capturing Sun Wukong and the 28 mansions inside. This extraordinary seed sack 
had the strange power to absorb energy, rendering those trapped within it completely fatigued for days. Back at New Thunderclap Temple, the minions unfastened the seed sack and transported the restrained prisoners to the back. In the stillness of the night, as Yellowbrow and his henchmen slumbered, Wukong managed to break free and liberate Tang Sanzang, along with his fellow disciples and the 28 mansions, rejuvenating them with his magical powers. The noise, however, roused Yellowbrow, who immediately set off in pursuit with his minions, reigniting the fight. After a few fierce skirmishes, Yellowbrow unleashed the seed sack again, capturing everyone but Sun Wukong. Seeking aid, Sun Wukong called upon a variety of immortals, including the four great generals, the five dragon kings, and little Prince Zhang. But despite their combined efforts, they were all defeated and imprisoned in the seed sack. Then Wukong realized that the treasures were associated with Maitreya, and decided to confront Yellowbrow once more. He claimed that Yellowbrow wouldn't stand a chance against even one of his hands without the seed sack, and Yellowbrow accepted the challenge. But when he charged ahead, Wukong pretended to be bested and fled, luring Yellowbrow to West Hill. There, unaware of Wukong's clever trick, Yellowbrow spotted a melon farmer by the roadside, who offered him a juicy melon to satisfy his thirst. Following his feast on the melon, Yellowbrow was soon struck by severe stomach cramps, writhing in distress on the ground. At that moment, the farmer revealed himself to be Maitreya, and the watermelon turned out to be none other than Sun Wukong, creating turmoil in Yellowbrow's belly. Maitreya reclaimed the seed sack, released Sun Wukong, and imprisoned Yellowbrow within the seed sack. In the end, after restoring the gold symbols at New Thunderclap Temple, Maitreya took Yellowbrow back with him. Upon arriving at the webbed hollow with his companions, Tang Sanzang walked into a house where he was greeted by a strange chill in the air and seven extraordinarily beautiful women who affectionately referred to each other as sisters. The eldest sister, taking charge of the situation, ordered her three younger sisters to whip up a meal. Tang Sanzang was completely unaware that the food they were preparing was actually human flesh. Yet when the meal was presented, he quickly realized it wasn't vegetarian and turned it down without hesitation. The seven sisters turned on him, accusing him of being too choosy and squandering their hard work. When he tried to apologize and make a hasty retreat, they knocked him to the ground and in a surprising twist, the sisters unveiled their navels, from which delicate white silk threads flowed, ensnaring Tang Sanzang and lifting him off the ground to hang from the ceiling. As the hours dragged on without their master's return, the three disciples became increasingly concerned, and Wukong decided to take matters into his own hands. He quietly slipped into the house, only to discover it deserted, except for a cocoon of spider silk that ensnared Tang Sanzang. He considered using his golden staff to free him, but he worried it could harm his master and draw the attention of the Yao Guais, so he decided to consult the local keeper about the Yao Guais' origins first. The keeper revealed to Sun Wukong that the seven female Yao Guais were actually spider Yao Guais, known for their daily baths in a hot spring situated three miles away. Intrigued, Wukong turned himself into a fly and buzzed over to the hot spring, where he caught the seven spider Yao Guais in the midst of a conversation about their plan to steam and devour Tang Sanzang. Wukong refused the idea to compromise his reputation by battling women. Instead, he chose to stall them so he morphed into an eagle, snatched their clothes, and then made his way back to the other disciples, where he laid out the situation and readied them for the rescue mission. Jubaji, however, was far more captivated by the garments that Sun Wukong had pilfered, insisting that they should defeat the Yao Guais first to save Tang Sanzang. Wukong, preferring to avoid that fight, told Jubaji to tackle the problem himself, while he and Xia Wujing are focusing on saving their master. Rushing to the hot spring, Zhu Baji found the seven lovely ladies, and with no shame at all, eagerly asked to bathe alongside them. Despite the sisters' refusal, he took off his clothes and dove into the pool. And when the angry sisters charged at him, he transformed into a catfish, darting around them in the water. Then, after a bit of fun, he came back to the surface, unveiled his true self, and dared them to battle. The enraged sisters ensnared him with their spider silk, and Jubaji could only watch in despair as the sisters vanished from sight. However, it didn't take long for the sisters to grasp the gravity of their situation, so they left Tang Sanzang behind, and hoping to find sanctuary, 
hurried to the temple of yellow flowers. After liberating himself from the clutches of the spider silk, Zhu Baji came back to Sun Wukong and Xiao Wujing, and together they rescued Tang San Zhang. Noticing that the spider Yao Guais had escaped, they decided against pursuing them, and after a brief respite, they continued on their quest. As Tang Sanzang and his disciples exited the webbed hollow, they stumbled upon a Taoist temple known as the Temple of Yellow Flowers, where the seven sisters were busily sewing garments, having sought shelter with their elder brother, the Taoist priest. Upon learning of their arrival, the seven sisters quickly filled their brother in on the situation, and enraged, he pledged his support to help them defeat Tang Sanzang and his companions by poisoning their tea. Wukong caught a whiff of something strange in the tea, and was about to sound the alarm, but he noticed that his master and brothers had already drunk it and were displaying troubling symptoms. After he confronted the priest, they started to fight, and the seven sisters, alerted by the noise, came to the scene and ensnared Wukong in their webs. Feeling overwhelmed, Wukong plucked a hair from his head and transformed it into 70 duplicates of himself. Together, they managed to free themselves from the webs and capture the seven sisters. As the defeated sisters pleaded for their lives, Wukong agreed to let them live if they would heal Tang Sanzang and his companions. Desperate, the sisters sought assistance from their brother, but the priest had his own agenda. He craved the immortality bestowing flesh of Tang Sanzang, so Wukong ended the lives of the seven sisters and started fighting the priest one on one. Upon reaching the 60th round, the priest began to shed his garments, unveiling exposing a multitude of eyes on his ribs that shone with a blinding golden brilliance. The radiant glow surrounded Wukong, confining him with no options to move forward, back or upwards. But just as he was on the brink of total defeat, he had a sudden spark of ingenuity and morphed into a pangolin, digging into the ground to evade capture. After he managed to escape, he was filled with dread for his poisoned master and brothers. Frustration drove him to tears, and just then, he heard a woman's cries echoing in the distance. It was Li Shan Lao Mu, the holy mother of Mount Li, who had witnessed the plight of the disciples and rushed to their aid. She urged Wukong to find the Blue Lotus Mother at Purple Cloud Mountain, as she was the only one capable of defeating the Yao Guai. The Blue Lotus Mother consented to lend her assistance and accompanied Wukong to the Temple of Yellow Flowers, where the Taoist priest's golden light was still glowing. But Blue Lotus Mother swiftly produced an embroidery needle and cast it into the shimmering golden light, shattering the priest's enchantment in an instant. Then, just as Wukong prepared to strike with his staff, she intervened, offering him three elixirs to heal his master and brothers. When they returned, Zhu Baji was also eager to confront the priest, but Blue Lotus Mother stepped in once again, and expressing her desire to take him back to protect her mountain, she cast a spell that unveiled the priest's true nature as a centipede, Yao Guai. With that, she bid farewell to them and took the centipede, Yao Guai, away. Red Boy, referred to as the Boy Sage King, is the offspring of the Bull Demon King and Princess Iron Fan, living in the Fiery Cloud Cave, located in the withered Pine Valley of Drillhead Mountain. When he found out that Tang Sanzang and his disciples were making their way through Drillhead Mountain, he hatched a scheme to capture Tang Sanzang, hoping to devour him and achieve immortality. Cloaked in a shimmering red aura, he tried to snatch Tang Sanzang, but Sun Wukong stepped in valiantly defending his master from harm. Red Boy then took on the form of a seven-year-old naked child, with ropes binding his hands and feet dangled from a pine tree, desperately crying for help, asserting that he was the offspring of a prosperous family who had been robbed by marauders. Recognizing the child as a Yao Guai, Sun Wukong tried to thwart Tang Sanzang's efforts to save him, but Tang Sanzang insisted on saving the boy. When Zhu Baji untied Red Boy, he acted as if he couldn't move, deceiving Sun Wukong into picking him up, and Wukong, who planned to kill him, agreed to the ruse. Red Boy, however, was sharp enough to recognize Sun Wukong's intentions, and using a corpse-escaping technique, he left a lifeless decoy body on Wukong's back. Unaware of the deception, Wukong smashed the fake body to bits, giving Red Boy the perfect chance to summon a whirlwind, and snatch Tang Sanzang away. Then, 
Sun Wukong learned from the local keeper that Red Boy was the offspring of his sworn brother, the Bull Demon King. And with this newfound knowledge, he and Jubaji decided to approach Red Boy to acknowledge their family ties. However, in a strategic move, Red Boy set up five small carts representing the five elements and armed with a fire-tipped spear engaged in battle with Wukong. He was outmatched, of course, and Jubaji saw a chance to step in and claim the spotlight. But Red Boy somehow managed to slip away and harnessed the power of the Five Elements carts to unleash the blazing Samadhi fire, forcing both Sun Wukong and Jubaji to retreat in haste. Wukong reached out to the Dragon Kings of the Four Seas for support, but the Samadhi fire from Red Boy only intensified in the rain, and as he attempted to capture Red Boy within the fiery inferno, a sudden burst of smoke overwhelmed him, forcing him to plunge into the water, narrowly evading a perilous fate. Following his triumph, Red Boy predicted that Sun Wukong would seek allies, so he left his cave to keep an eye out and soon noticed Zhu Baji flying south on a cloud. Realizing that he was likely heading to Guan Yin for assistance, Red Boy seized the opportunity, took a quicker route to intercept Zhu Baji, disguised himself as Guan Yin, and cunningly lured Jubaji into the fiery cloud cave, where he successfully captured him. Ultimately, Wukong employed a ruse of defeat to bait Red Boy to Guan Yin, and when Red Boy lunged at her with his spear, Guan Yin ascended into the skies, leaving her lotus pedestal behind. As Red Boy settled cross-legged on the lotus pedestal, mimicking Guan Yin, the pedestal suddenly transformed into a swarm of sharp blades that pierced his legs. Writhing in agony, he cried out to Guan Yin for mercy, falsely professing his wish to convert, and Guan Yin withdrew the barbed hooks. But the moment he was released, Red Boy's hostility flared up again, launching another attack on her with his spear. Guan Yin pulled out five golden rings from her sleeve, putting them on Red Boy's head, hands and feet, inflicting excruciating pain. Left with no alternatives, Red Boy ultimately yielded and consented to convert. Known as the great sage who pacifies heaven, the Bull Demon King is the husband of Princess Iron Fan and Princess Jade Face and the father of Red Boy. He has a strong connection with Sun Wukong, having been sworn brothers during Wukong's reign as the handsome Monkey King. After Wukong was captured, the Bull Demon King settled in the Flaming Mountains, where he married Princess Iron Fan and became the father of Red Boy. Later on, he also married Princess Jade Face, making his residence in her cloud-piercing cave. As Tang Sanzang and his companions journeyed through the flaming mountains, they encountered fierce, unyielding flames that barred their path. Wukong discovered that the magical banana leaf fan owned by Princess Iron Fan could put out the fire, so he made his way to the banana leaf cave on Green Cloud Mountain to request her help. However, Princess Iron Fan was still bitter about Sun Wukong's previous actions that had caused her to lose her son, Red Boy, and she flatly refused his plea. After a fiery exchange of words, she unleashed the power of the fan, sending Sun Wukong hurtling away for thousands of miles. Shortly thereafter, Sun Wukong made his way back to Banana Leaf Cave to request the fan once more. This sparked yet another dispute, escalating into a fierce battle. Realizing she was no match for him, Princess Iron Fan tried to use the fan to blow Sun Wukong away again, but this time he was prepared, wielding a magical wind-stopping pearl that Lingji Bodhisattva had given him to counteract the fan's might. As Princess Iron Fan retreated into the cave, Wukong cleverly morphed into a minuscule insect and concealed himself in her tea. When she took a sip, he slipped into her stomach, bringing her unbearable pain. Overwhelmed by the agony, she pleaded for mercy and consented to lend him the fan. However, when Wukong attempted to wield it, he realized it was a counterfeit, intensifying the flames instead of extinguishing them. Driven by urgency, Sun Wukong sought out the Bull Demon King at the Cloud-Piercing Cave, desperate for assistance. And of course, he riled up Princess Jade Face, who wasted no time in voicing her grievances to her husband. Although the Bull Demon King was reluctant to confront his sworn brother at first, his perspective changed upon hearing about the Banana Leaf Fan request, leading him to suspect that Sun Wukong had also mistreated Princess Iron Fan. 
However, following an epic clash that spanned numerous rounds, the Dragon King of Clear Wave Pond graciously invited the Bull Demon King to a lavish feast. Taking advantage of this moment, Wukong transformed into the Bull Demon King, hopped onto his trusty mount, and journeyed to Banana Leaf Cave, deceiving Princess Iron Fan into surrendering the authentic Banana Leaf Fan and the spell required to activate it. Upon discovering that Wukong had outsmarted Princess Iron Fan, the Bull Demon King resolved to turn the tables by employing Wukong's own cunning methods. So he transformed into Jubajie to trick Wukong and snatch back the fan. As Wukong proudly displayed his triumph to Jubaji, he soon realized he had been outwitted and filled with fury, he reignited the battle with the Bull Demon King. As the fight intensified, Jubaji joined the fray, forcing the Bull Demon King to retreat to the cloud-piercing cave. Princess Jadeface attempted to support her husband with her minions, but they were quickly overpowered by the strength of Sun Wukong and Jubaji. In a last-ditch effort to evade capture, the Bull Demon King morphed into a swan, but Wukong was hot on his trail, while Princess Jadeface couldn't make her escape in time and was ultimately killed by Jubaji inside the cave. At a given point, the Bull Demon King shifted back to his true form, continuing his fierce duel with Wukong in a relentless battle that stretched over several days and nights, capturing the attention of the Heavenly Court. In the end, the Bull Demon King retreated to the Banana Leaf Cave while Wukong sought out reinforcements, and it was Neza and his father, Li Jing, who triumphed over the Bull Demon King. In surrender, he handed the Banana Leaf Fan to Sun Wukong, and the monk and his companions resumed their journey to the west. Erlang Shen, often referred to as Yang Jian, stands out as one of the most celebrated and respected deities in Chinese mythology and literature. His unique third eye, positioned prominently on his forehead, empowers him to pierce through lies and illusions. With a compelling history and a multifaceted connection to Sun Wukong, Yang Jian is a formidable character in the pantheon of Chinese legends. Frequently portrayed as a divine warrior, he wields a distinctive, three-pronged, double-edged spear and is never seen without his loyal companion, the Howling Celestial Dog. His most notable showdown in Journey to the West features an intense battle with Sun Wukong. The conflict erupts when Sun Wukong, asserting his dominance, declares himself the Great Sage equal to heaven, creating turmoil in the heavenly court, and the Jade Emperor, unable to reign in the unruly Monkey King, summons Yang Jian to bring him to heal. The thrilling confrontation between Yang Jian and Sun Wukong stands out as one of the most exhilarating moments in the story. Both fighters are evenly matched, demonstrating their remarkable skills in an intense and extended duel. Yang Jian's third eye plays a pivotal role in neutralizing Sun Wukong's impressive shape-shifting abilities, allowing him to see past Sun Wukong's clever transformations. The conflict ultimately reaches a deadlock, and it is only with the help of the Buddha that Sun Wukong is ultimately restrained and trapped beneath the Five Elements Mountain, allowing us to begin another fantastic journey, this time in the realm of video games, a journey called Black Myth Wukong. The opening scene may not reveal much to those who aren't acquainted with the legend of Sun Wukong, but if you've journeyed with me through the game's lore up to this point, you'll have a clear understanding of the intense drama that is about to play out. In recognition of Sun Wukong's remarkable feats in safeguarding Tang Sanzang, the celestial powers aim to bestow upon him an official role, hoping to keep him under their thumb. But Wukong, wise as ever, saw through their deception and chose to walk away. However, this decision marked another act of defiance from the Monkey King, leading us to the dramatic opening scene where the four heavenly kings, Erlang and a formidable army, were dispatched to drag Wukong back to his new, well, prison. In the ensuing clash, Wukong's physical form is destroyed, but his essence splinters into six pieces, scattering across the realm. And this is where your epic journey begins, as you the destined one, take on the role of another monkey, tasked with retrieving Wukong's lost fragments and reviving the legendary hero.